So in this uh, session, I'm going to address my views of the U.S. policy towards EastMed and its impact on EastMed security. Uh, my basic thesis in the COVID-19 era and beyond U.S. policy is evolving in ways that will further compromise um, regional security in the East Med. There are three principal ways um, U.S. policy affects East Med regional security. The first is through the pattern of U.S. regime change wars and regime control efforts of the past decade, obvious, the most obvious being the effort with France and other NATO members to effect regime change in Libya, the ongoing uh, efforts which have somewhat attenuated in Syria, and the on again and off again efforts in, in Egypt in terms of the maneuvering around the initial departure of Mubarak and the initial election of, of the Muslim Brotherhood followed by its replacement for or the second, um, second revolution, if you will. The second way in which the U.S. policy affects is through its special relationships. And there, there are essentially three special relationships, two of which are now in somewhat in question. Uh, the special relationship, of course, with Israel, the special relationship with Saudi Arabia, and by extension or in connection with that UAE, and finally, with the historical special relationship with Turkey, which now is and has been for the last three or four years somewhat in, in question, but is not, in my view, is not entirely a moot special relationship. And finally, are the various geo-ideological, geopolitical, geo-civilizational projects or campaigns that the U.S. from time to time initiates or give, gives rise to defining U.S. foreign policy. And in this case, uh, we have a number. One is to stop the Shia crescent in, in, terms, and, in, in terms of the expansion of, of and connection of the land bridge from Iran through Iraq, Syria to the Eastern Mediterranean to limit uh, or if possible entirely exclude Russia's influence. The new emerging geoeconomic and geopolitical Cold War with China and the campaigns to extend U.S. and NATO's reach principal, principally with the effort to expand uh, NATO membership in the Balkans, but that now includes, uh, short of NATO membership, the Eastern Mediterranean, Mediterranean uh, Security Partnership. The U.S. also uh, policy also affects East Med through the oil and do dollar, but we'll address that in another session. The initial promise of some of the, the uh, President Trump's agenda has given way to positions that I would argue are generally detrimental to East Med security. Uh, the original goal of ending regime change wars has been overtaken by the continued U.S. military presence or ex actually expanded military presence in Syria and Iraq and the continued efforts to destabilize the Assad uh, government and to control internal politics. Whatever you think of the Assad government, nonetheless, these ongoing efforts do contribute to general immigration pressures, migration pressures, economic dislocations, and other political consequences that are not favorable to the East Med generally. And sec secondly, the, the, uh, the, the Trump administration has stepped up its what it's called its maximum pressure campaign against Iran and 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 um, to the point of of also withdrawing from the um, agreement the JCPOA um, it has given greater latitude 
uh, for Israel in dealing with the Palestinians mm -hmm. and its uh, and its neighbors, uh, which generally uh, uh, in giving greater freedom to the Netanyahu government, it, it again has contributed to some tensions in the region. Uh, then we have uh, the Trump administration's support for a war, Saudi war against Yemen and its Cold War with with Qatar and Qatar and Turkey, um, which which spills over uh, and also obviously impacts uh, the, the the various uh, Arab countries' relationships with with Turkey, and then we have the tense military and political standoff um, be, with Russia, moderated to some degree by necessary deconflicting collaboration to avoid actually precipitating a major a major war. And this is complicated by the provocative actions of Turkey, which often um, could spark additional and and by the sort of American and, and Turkish supported jihadis in Syria, which are out in some ways to precipitate war. Finally, um, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, especially now in the in the COVID-19 period, the, the Cold War pressures against China are increasing with an effort to exclude Chinese investment and, and economic and political relations with countries. Here, actually, you know, Israel in all these cases actually enjoys a favorable position because it's a, able to carry on these relationships while other countries are, while pressures are mounted against other countries to, to curb those relationships. So, and we have this intensified campaign to extend U.S. and NATO's reach, the security and political reach in, in the Balkan, which is directed by Ambassador Piot, who of course was one of the architects of the Ukraine maiden revo revo revolution. But it, it gets extended to, to obviously the issue of Northern Macedonia, Kosovo, et cetera. So, but in pursuing these policies, the Trump administration has encountered new dilemmas, which will force at some point either a reassessment of these policies or a doubling down on these policies. For example, the disaster of, of Saudi policy under, under MBS, essentially the, the way that the Yemen war has gone uh, awry, the, enormous humanitarian catastrophes that accompany this, and the cl clear sort of international uh, opprobrium that MBS has now uh, garnered. Then we have the internal Cold War, the attempt to intimidate uh, Qatar, which didn't fully succeed, which complicated, the US has a major military base in Qatar, and so it greatly complicated our the U.S. relationship with with parts of the Arab, Arab Gulf world, um, etc., and then we've had the, the latest, which is the oil price, oil market share war, mismanagement of the oil market, which to some degree the the Trump administration had in, um, uh, allowed. Um, or, or counted on Saudi Arabia to act in not only its best interest, but in the interest of the U.S. shale industry. More about that in another video. Uh, then Russia's growing influence, in spite of the effort to limit R Russia's influence in the region, Russia's influence has actually been, as we know, growing, including with 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 uh, constructive and influential relations with, with Israel. I think Netanyahu has gone to Moscow many more times than he has gone to Washington it's, it's in spite of the US uh, special relationship with Israel. And, and the largely successful balancing 
geopolitical doctrine Moscow has, has pursued, balancing Israel and Iran and Syria, balancing the, the Saudi Arabia and UAE with, with Egypt and, 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 and Qatar and, and, and Turkey, but generally sort of a tendency to try to find areas of, of cooperation or deconfliction as well as 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 well as as win-win uh, political and economic uh, relation, relationships, and then we've had the, you know the maximum in many respects the maximum pressure against the Islamic Republic of Iran has 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 not uh, succeeded. Uh, the Iran uh, was able to um, you know successfully through its proxies or indirectly uh, pursue successful attacks on Saudi oil facilities and on U.S. positions in Iran, which, which exposed really the hollowness of the U.S. security commitment or the, 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 the sort of inability in order to provide security given the nature of the, of the new weapon systems and, 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 and population popular movements and the um, and uh, also exposing I think the hollowness of of the of the US security um, uh, protection or management if you will is was has been Turkey's more assertive neo-Ottoman strategy obviously in Syria but also in the Eastern Med and its you know, latest declarations of extended uh, maritime um, uh, claims that it's ma making in, in the Mediterranean. The other fundamental problem is that the, there's an imbalance in, in, in what the, U the U.S. currently is able and willing to offer countries in the region. The U.S. is heavy on a coercive and ideological agenda, but it's very light on providing real economic uh, and security benefits to countries in, in, in the region. Now, this is shocking and an embarrassment to, to, to many of us Americans who would expect the U.S. to play a much more constructive role and have a much better balance between providing benefits and, and creating security risks. This brings us to the final part of, of the, my, my remarks, which is the, the, <clears throat> of the way the U.S. Uh, pursues the a, a asymmetrical or what turns out to be an asymmetrical security relation with the Eastern Med uh, countries again with the exception of Israel and to some degree with the exception of Egypt as reflected in the Eastern Mediterranean Security and Energy Partnership. In this partnership, if you look at the act and what the principles behind it in the U.S. are, are saying, is that the U.S. offers little or no, no direct or even little or no uh, residual security benefits to to Cyprus. It did lift, of course, the arms embargo, but I would argue uh, that is a rather uh, um, insignificant contribution to Cyprus security, given the nature of the security threats of Cyprus uh, faces. It just gives the license for the U.S. to sell weapons to Cyprus rather than having other countries sell weapons to Cyprus. But at the same time that it offers very little uh, security and economic benefits, the U.S. in this act by its partnership has increased the demands on Greece and Cyprus and places new constraints on their relationship with China and Russia. It requires them to report on the the line influence of, of Russia and to limit certain kinds of con contacts. Um, so this relationship, however, 
without bringing new benefits and placing new constraints actually increases the risk for the East Med um, principles in the in the in this security relationship. The relationship brings new security risks in the form of a spillover from the U.S. geopolitical campaign uh, in the Balkans, U.S. war against Iran, and U.S. action vis-a-vis -vis the Su Sunni Arab Cold War. The U.S., uh, Cyprus and Greece, in spite of their locality and in spite of migration pressures, could generally be considered to be uh, until recently vulnerable from any spillover from the Syrian conflict. But now with, with countries like Qatar, Iran, um, Turkey all engaged in Russia militarily, nonetheless, there has to be calculations that, that Cyprus becomes much more vulnerable or weak point in terms of Turkey gaining leverage in any of those of those uh, conflicts or, or s some of the elements in the uh, actually um, uh, responding by putting uh, Cypriot and Greek interest at, at, at risk. It, uh, this new security partnership actually ironically weakens the constraints on Turkey's action in recent regions by forcing Greece and Cyprus to, to, to reduce, if not fully cut, their ties with Russia and, 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 and China. Uh, in spite of the so-called, you know, new relationship between Russia and China, it's Russia that remains the principal constraint on Turkey, as, we re as we've re repeatedly seen in regard to their neo-Ottoman ambitions in Syria. It's Russia that in the end is blocking or pushing back in a, in a rather sort of sophisticated manner, not always directly. While it's the US that is often in the end green lighting or protecting Turkish backed jihadis or, or Turkish, uh, Turkish actions in spite of US occasional some U.S. Pro protests. It makes more uh, difficult, therefore, Russia's balancing and conflict management role vis-a-vis -vis Israel, Iran, Turkey, Syria, Egypt, and the Gulf states, thus, in my view, reducing the overall, what I'd call the security commons, the, the sense of which there's a, a responsible power of trying to manage the conflict to avoid uh, escalations where necessary or undo both political and military and economic costs. Finally, uh, or finally, the U.S. is not able to deliver what the region most needs in terms of markets, investment, political and economic security, political and economic reform while attempting to, to limit China's economic and political reach in the region. Uh, China is obviously a, a self-interested actor that is, ex is attempting to build a larger, through its Belt and Road Initiative, Eurasian economic uh, space. Uh, but uh, there are benefits as well as uh, as downsides to that effort that that if if the region is smart can can benefit from as opposed to being made more vulnerable to a, a final note in this regard is that that you know Israel obviously is in a very special place, but one could actually do more to emulate. Israel's success in managing this relationship. Israel manages to have good relations with U.S., Russia, China, uh, less, perhaps a little less so with, with Europe because of the, the boycotts. But nonetheless, you, the Israel sort of gets maximum benefit from the U.S. relationship 
but faces virtually no constraints on its freedom of action. Now it's very difficult to, to, to obviously, Israel's in a very special privileged position, but Egypt is managing these relationships uh, better, I would argue, than, 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 than Greece and Cyprus at, at the moment. Uh, that concludes my remarks on, on US policy towards uh, East Med security.